Amen. Ave Maria, grazie a te, Amen. Ave Maria, grazie a te, Domino, Pepe. Benedicta tu, Muriatibus, et Benedictus, Fuglus, Ventus, Tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nuc in anora mortis nostrae. Amen. Nomine Patris, Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Brethren, Christ, Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Welcome to the Guild Family Stream. Jesus is King with co-host and uh, sparring partner, Nicholas Cavazos. Everybody's favorite Hispanic, actually. Uh, do you you click Hispanic on your uh, like census form, Cavazos, or no? I actually have never filled out a census form, but it's funny because back like pre um, the downfall of you know affirmative action, my parents would always tell me go ahead and put Hispanic on like all college applications and stuff like that because you're gonna get better treatment. So sad, so incredibly sad. It's funny so. how like the Hispanics, uh, like people don't. It's like what does it say? It's like non-white. Or like they use the term white, but they don't realize that Hispanic, like some Hispanics are to like as white as me. It's like exactly like like Luis Medina is pretty white. It's like they don't understand how race works. But it, of course, they don't know, understand what race works. Anyways, this show is uh, part one, episode one, hopefully of trad disputed questions. This is where me and Cavazos argue fiercely about uh, all sorts of trad disputed questions. Uh and uh, we pontificate to one another at all sorts of fun stuff like that. So the f and this is for um, this is for the Patreon subscribers of Traditional Thomas. This is for the Guild members of Meaning of Catholic. We're sh we're switching gears here at Meaning of Catholic to uh, provide better and more content for our members. And so if you want the full conversation we're about to have, you got to go to Patreon.com/slash Traditional Thomas or meaningofcatholic.com slash register. So this is uh, a continued conversation of, I wrote an article at 1P5, Cavazos wrote, had a, like a hit video against me. Uh, it, was, it was great. See, this is, this is what I love about uh, being a, a, a traditionalist, is if you're traditionally, actually ha you have a disputed question, traditionally, it's like, uh, like St. Bonaventure or St. Thomas, having a disagreement it's like uh nothing bitter at all about this it's like this is exciting to try to uh sharpen each other's swords here that's the point any comments on uh disputed questions oh yeah no 100 percent. it's funny i had several people that were like why are you beefing with flanders he's such a good guy and i say i state like for over a minute and a half in the beginning of the video that He's like one of the best guys that I know on planet Earth, and that this is not an attack video. <laughs> Please don't start my canonization process yet, okay? Please. It's too, it's too late. So, um, But yeah, it's funny. It's like, it, but you know, what's also I think really tragic is, and but maybe what you could be used for good is that, you know, unfortunately, as content creators, we know that like videos like this, you know, or videos like the one I made they're the one that generate a ton of views because tons of people are like, oh, drama is so cool, but I think that what we could do is actually it's a it's a better forum because you can have good disputed questions in like, you know, with a clickbaity sounding title. But as long as you, you know, give the proper decorum that's needed, you give the proper, you know, if you will, nuance of charity of, hey, this guy's not a bad dude. This is just where I disagree. Let's debate it out. That's good. And I think that that is a, the kind of culture that we need to see revived on everywhere but i would say particularly in catholic circles online yeah totally it's it's like this is that is traditionally catholic this is like saint bonaventure and saint thomas fighting with each other but then saint bonaventure loves saint thomas's eucharistic hymns so much that saint bonaventure just rips up his own hymns it's like oh man i love your hips that, those are mm -hmm. awesome way better than mine <laughs> even though Sorry. you're a heretic <laughs> uh, <laughs> but all in good fun yeah like you're a heretic uh -huh. but all in good fun Jacob Fowler, what's up, brother? I'm actually drinking Earl Grey tea today, like Captain Picard, because uh, I, I ran out of, or I don't have enough coffee for my wife to get through the weekends. I'm going away, uh, taking my boys on a troops camp out this weekend, and I needed to leave enough coffee for my wife to drink coffee, so I got to get my caffeine from Earl Grey. 
I don't know, man. Um, Drinking tea on on April nineteenth, the the day of the Battle of Lexington and Concord that we're commemorating today. You're drinking tea, acting all British. Oh yeah, there. Well, I I would. Um, I don't know. I, I think acting I'm... acting sus here. <laughs> uh, so I, I wanted to begin this conversation because what what I wanted to address first, uh, before well, we should talk about terminology first, but we'll talk about that second or third because the first topic is the new mass that was the point of disagreement that you had with me and i want to preface this by first asking you a little bit more about your particular brand of traditionalism which i know a little bit about Cavazos, but i want to hear more about where you're coming from because i think uh how we came to the traditional movement is critical for understanding where people land on these different things because for me i spent four or five years as an Eastern Orthodox Christian or catechumen studying first millennium controversies about the papacy. And then I became Catholic. And then I became very Augustinian with my reading of Dietrich von Hildebrand. And those are the main influences that caused me to come into certain points of disagreement with Archbishop Lefebvre and the sspx on certain disputed matters i i'm a defender and promoter of the sspx um but i i find that i disagree on certain disputed matters and i find myself that i i agree more and more with bishop schneider bishop schneider's opinion of the new mass bishop schneider's opinion of the sspx bishop schneider's opinion about pretty much everything uh so i find myself more on his side of things on on some of the stuff so Cavazos, can you tell us a little bit about how did you come to not only Catholicism, because you are a convert like myself, but when you became a traditionalist and why are you such a zealous Lefebvreist? <laughs> it's a good way to yeah, preface it, I guess, with uh, historical background, because it, it is interesting. My historical background was coming from the world of reformed Protestantism. So high Calvinism, Presbyterianism right? Reformed theology. And I think that that influenced a lot of my understanding of Protestantism when it came to the new mass issue, because when I became Catholic, it was very much so through the, um, one, I would just say greater exposure to the fathers, right? Seeing what the fathers of the church believed in particular issues, things like baptismal regeneration, ecclesial poly, uh, polity, et cetera. Um, things like that really kind of rocked the boat for my Calvinistic world. Um, and then seeing, though, how the New Mass in its own writings, right? And so when I say its own writings, I mean in the writings of Bunini, in the writings of the other concilium members, um, in their own works, right? And you can think of people uh, also even pre-concilium uh, meetings that had a great influence uh, that later on, um, you know, like, for instance, Father Jungmann. Right, who was a, a German critical scholar um, who had a lot of influence and thought, etc., on the Concilium. When I went and I looked at their concepts of the New Mass while I was coming into the church, as well as reading the Council of Trent as kind of an intro into the faith, etc., I was very scandalized because I saw <clears throat> very much so a, a very strong tendency to Protestantize the liturgy. Not so much in its, in its aesthetics primarily. That's what most people typically will point to. They'll say, well, you know, hey, the priest is facing the people, etc. And, you know, there's, of course, merit to that discussion. But it was primarily in their concepts of theological um, understandings, right? Um, so as an example, when you go and you start looking at what the concilium members believed about the concept of sin and the concept of redemption, they had a fundamentally different notion than what was either dogmatized at Trent, right? So in dogma or in just the very, you know, strong opinions of um, preconciliar theologians. So as an example, seeing sin as primarily a offense against man's dignity as opposed to an offense against God, right? There's, of course, truth in both of that, but there's an order of hierarchy and importance, etc. And I think that, you know, if you yeah. want a good modern example of this, in this latest document, right, on infinite dignity, while there's a lot of good that we can celebrate from it, one of the things I pointed out on one of the Avoiding Babylon shows was it's 
doesn't really ever mention sin in the context of it's offending God. It's all just, it hurts me, it hurts me, which is a new concept or maybe a elongated concept in the opposite direction of sin. So you could take this when it comes to all various issues, redemption, sin, the resurrection, the cross, etc. And it made me realize that there was a, at least a, a philosophical and theological break with it. And so being kind of a Thomist, going back and studying not just St. Thomas, but also the Thomistic commentators, being now heavily influenced by, um, I guess, what people just would call the neo-scholastics in the context of the manual. So they're all Thomists in one form or another, most of them, um, although they do give a lot of leeway to other schools of thought. But, you know, they're mostly Jesuits and Dominicans. Um, all of this kind of solidified for me my position on the new mass, which is essentially that of just the SSPX, if you will. That's just the best way to coin it and put it together. Yeah. And uh, as a disciple of Hildebrand, Hildebrand also rejects the new mass for the same reasons that you just said. Um, but I would have some qualifications as to some of the positions of the SSPX regarding the new mass. But more on that when we return in just a minute. 